we're going to look at an example of break-even EBIT and how to calculate it. And I'm going to use a company uh, that is worth $8 million. And we're going to look at the same company under two different financing scenarios, just like the house. The house doesn't change. It's the financing that does. So the first plan is no debt, like the no mortgage scenario. And the second plan is to have some debt in the financing, uh, like the mortgage. Uh, so in this case, it's no debt or 50% of the company is going to be financed with debt. So we're going to go back to the original formula that we had that said that the value of a company is equal to debt plus equity. So if the company's value is $8 million and the, the, then there's no debt, then the value of the equity has to be $8 million as well. In the plan where it's 50-50, 50 50% uh, 50 of the value of the company is going to be debt, which is $4 million. So the balance is going to be uh, equity, the $4 million remaining. And we're also told that the company's shares trade at $20 per share and interest on the debt is at 10% and taxes are zero. So the question is, at what level of uh, EBIT is it beneficial for the company to add uh, debt? So we last time we, we said that the earnings per share of the two plans has to be the same. So the earnings per share for the company under plan A would have to equal earnings per share of the company under plan B in order to, uh, to, to be working at the break-even EBIT. Um, and that's a scenario where you'd add debt. So earnings per share, remember, is net income divided by the number of shares outstanding for each of those two, A and B. And it's going to be different for the two, the net income and the shares, because of, uh, uh, because of the way they're financed. So let's, uh, let's go through each one of these. And let's start with net income first. Um, so if we're going to look at the, uh, how net income is calculated with uh, uh, EBIT, um, now what we're going to do in this case is EBIT is going to be the variable. So we're going to take earnings before interest and taxes minus the interest that you pay times 1 minus the tax rate. Okay? And the reason we do times 1 minus the tax rate is because interest is deductible. So, so you get a deduction for it. So the net interest that you're paying is after tax is multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. So we've got uh, EBIT is uh, the, the variable in this case, and this is what we're going to try to solve for. So we don't know what EBIT is right now. Um, we do know what interest expense and taxes are, and we'll, we'll do that in a second. So this is the formula for both, net income of A and B. So let's calculate each one of them. Okay, so net income of A with EBIT as the variable is going to be EBIT minus the interest expense, which uh, is zero. Now, the reason it's zero is because there's no debt. And taxes, we're told, are zero, multiplied by one minus zero. Uh, so basically, the right part of the equation is zero. And the net income under plan A is going to be the EBIT for the company. Net income for plan B is going to be, let's plug it in the same scenario, EBIT is the variable minus interest expense. Now, there is going to be an interest expense in this case because we have uh, $4 million of uh, debt. And the interest, we're told, is at 10%. So 4 million times 10% is the interest rate, multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate uh, for the deduction. But in this case, taxes are 0, so there is no deduction. So we're just really multiplying by 1. Um, so the, the end result is uh, it's going to be EBIT minus 400,000. So each of those two uh, scenarios gives us the numerator for uh, the formulas above. Now we need to calculate the denominators. Number of shares outstanding is going to be essentially the total value of your equity, not the value of the company, but the value of the equity divided by the price per share that the equity is trading at. And in this case, we're going to start with company A, and the value of the equity is $8 million. It's the full amount. Okay, so remember that. That was given. Price per share is also given as $20 per share. Therefore, that means we have to have 400,000 shares outstanding in this company uh, for that to work out. Okay, so we now have the denominator for the left side. Let's do the same thing for uh, the number of shares outstanding for company B. In this case, we were 50% financed by equity. So we had $4 million of equity, which was given up here. And then the price per share is still $20 per share. 
So as a result, it's going to be exactly half of the value of, uh, um, of plan A. So we have 200,000 shares outstanding. So now we can substitute these variables into the formula for earnings per share of A. Plan A has to equal earnings per share of plan B. And at this level, we will be operating at the break-even EBIT. So uh, EBIT, uh, so earnings per share for A is going to be net income of A divided by number of shares outstanding for A. And earnings per share for B is going to be net income of B divided by number of shares outstanding for B. And we just calculated each one of these four items. So net income from A is just strictly EBIT, which we calculated up above. Okay, net income from B is going to be EBIT minus 400,000. Okay, so those are the two numerators for this uh, equation. The denominators are also just calculated right up here. The number of shares outstanding for, for A was 400,000 that we just calculated, and 200,000 for B. So with EBIT as a variable, that formula has to hold true for uh, the calculation of break-even. We're just going to cross-multiply. We're going to get a solution that says 200,000 EBIT is equal to 400,000 times EBIT, in brackets, EBIT minus $400,000. And what we want to do again is solve for EBIT. So um, if I divide each side by 200,000, the uh, equation becomes EBIT is equal to 400,000 uh, times bracket EBIT minus $400,000 divided by 200,000. And we can cancel out the 200,000 and 400,000 and just make it two and one. And then if you solve for the remainder of that equation, you come up with an EBIT value of $800,000. And that essentially means that uh, that is the break-even EBIT. So if, um, if the EBIT for the company is greater than $800,000, it makes sense for them to add debt. Their earnings per share would increase and the shareholders would be better off. If it's less than $800,000, then adding debt would be detrimental to the company. And um, that's how you calculate the break-even uh, EBIT for a company.